guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader and today I'm going to be doing my March wrap up. Now you might be thinking, Lindsay, you don't do monthly wrap ups, so why are you doing a March wrap up? Well, I have been having another think about my channel again over the last couple of months and I realised that I wasn't really enjoying filming my weekly reads videos. Um, I would often leave it more than one week in between them just because I didn't feel like I had read enough in between in order to update you guys in that kind of way. Um, so I wasn't doing it weekly to begin with and then I was just kind of thinking that I was saying the same kinds of things and that it was a little, just a little bit repetitive. So I decided to stop doing the weekly reads videos. I might still do a Friday reads video every now and again or like a, a what I'm currently reading video or something along those lines just to catch you up at some points in the month. Um, but I've decided I'm going to go back to doing my monthly wrap up videos instead. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I, in March, I read a total of seven books, which when I was adding it up just before I press record on this video, I wasn't expecting to have read that many books in March. Um, I'm on track with my Goodreads goal, but I've only I only feel like I've come back on track with that again in the last few weeks. Um, I have kind of felt like my reading really slowed down um, in February and um, sort of like in the middle of February, beginning of March, something like that. So I was really pleasantly surprised to see that I had read that many books. Yeah, so seven books isn't a bad number at all. So let's jump into what I read in March. The first book that I completed in March was A Princess in Theory and this is by Alyssa Cole. I read this on my Kindle. This is a contemporary romance novel and it focuses around the idea of an African prince who starts emailing, um, I can't remember her name. I've, this is the only thing with my monthly wrap ups is I have to make sure that I've written stuff down and made notes for these video because I get to these videos and I forget characters' names and what happened and so on and so forth. So I'm going to have to make sure I'm a bit more prepared for April. Um, but how, we, yeah, we've got Naledi. That's her name, Naledi. Um, so, uh, yeah, this African prince called the bees, the, the bezo, Prince the bezo. He has been emailing the lady saying that um, she is his bride and, you know, she, he needs some more details from her in order to kind of like, not the complete the transaction, but like make it more official and things like that. And she keeps getting these emails and thinking, this is a load of rubbish, you know, this is just spam. This is one of those things in order to get me to give you my bank account details and things like that. And then like, bankrupt me basically so um she just keeps deleting them um she is working two or three different jobs while she's putting herself through university she's studying um to be some sort of scientist i think um and then one day prince the so comes to new york on business and he tracks the lady down and the two of them meet he doesn't tell her first of all who he is um, so it's about them developing a relationship together. This was really, really good. I'd never read anything by Alyssa Cole before and it didn't read to me like a lot of romance novels do. It had a different kind of style to it, which I really enjoyed. I really thought that the characters were realistic, well fleshed out. Um, I could relate to them in a number of different ways. Um, and I really liked the whole playing on the idea of this kind of like spam email and him actually being a prince and this actually being real uh, because you know we've all had those spam emails that we just press delete on there's just a load of rubbish basically so I quite like the way that she played on that idea um, and I, I like the fact that the lady's character was a really strong character she was very career orientated but also she'd had quite a hard upbringing and she it was all about looking out for herself and I really felt like, yeah, I was really rooting for her character. Um, it was quite spicy at times, so I would say that if you don't like romance novels that have that kind of spice factor to them, then this isn't for you. 
but um, I really enjoyed it and overall I think I gave it four stars yeah I did I gave it four stars next up I listened to on audio the trauma cleaner one woman's extraordinary life in death decay and disaster by Sarah Krasnostein and this uh, was read by Rachel Tidd. And this is an aud a non-fiction audio book that is about the life of um, Sandra Pankhurst. And Sa Sandra Pankhurst is a trauma cleaner. She has her own cleaning business where she specialises in cleaning up crime scenes and um, cleaning up houses where the owners have kind of left them to go to, to rot, basically. Um, and kind of like drug houses and things like that um, so she's seen quite a lot of really horrible things in her life um, and while I was going into this audiobook I didn't know an awful lot about what it was going to be about and I just thought it was going to centre around that kind of idea and you did get the story was interspersed with all of these different moments where the author was following um, Sandra around and kind of talking to her about her business and things like that so you did get to see a lot of that, but it was much more about Sandra's life. Um, Sandra is from Australia and she um, had a very hard upbringing. And this is about, about her life and about how she discovered that she was a woman in a man's body and about her, all of her different relationships and about some really terrible things that have happened to her in her lifetime and just all about her life basically and it was really really interesting I learned an awful lot about um, Australia in the 1970s and 1980s I learned an awful lot about um, you know being transgender and being you know other in terms of your sexuality um, at that particular time and even now and just it was just fascinating learning about her life basically um, really recommend the audiobook it was fantastic um, obviously I've never read it in physical form so I assume you know just as good but the audiobook is very very good as well so I definitely recommend um, listening to it if you get the opportunity to loved it loved it and I gave it 4.5 stars Next up, I read from the library, Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History by Vashti Harrison. This is basically a children's book and it has um, information in it on 40 different black women throughout history. So it has a page of information on them and then it has um, an illustration on the opposite page. And the illustration was actually uh, by the author as well. And there were some really lovely illustrations in there. Um, and it's a bit like in the vein of, vein of Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, that kind of idea, but it's focused around black women. And loved it just like I've loved the other types of these books that I've read before. Um, there were lots of different women in here that I didn't know anything about, um, as well as women that I had heard of and knew some things about, but learnt some more through reading this book. And it was just really, really delightful. So if you're looking for something um, where you can buy a young person a present, um, this would be a really, really good idea. I definitely want a copy of it on my shelf in the future, and I gave it five stars. The fourth book that I read in March was A Bride for Glenmore and this is by Sarah Morgan. I got this back from the library as well. I've been trying to make my way through Sarah Morgan's back catalogue and these were some of the earlier books that she wrote for Mills and Boom. Um, and this is the first book in a trilogy of stories that are set on a remote Scottish island and this particular story follows Ethan and Kyla and Ethan has... Um, just accepted a job as a doctor on the island um i think it's a temporary sort of job i think he's only accepted like a year-long position or something like that and um, he shows up on the island and to meet him from the ferry is kyla and kyla is the sister of the other doctor that works on the island um, and she's also a practice nurse um, and so the two of them meet and you know start developing this relationship and it's about their relationship obviously as we go along and um, you could definitely tell this was one of Sarah Morgan's earlier books I just the writing wasn't up to par at all it was so different from what I have seen of her work in in the past like the the sort of more recent stuff that she's done there was just an awful lot of 
telling rather than showing and also bits and bobs that just didn't really make sense or that were really obvious to the reader and didn't really need pointing out but they were pointed out um yeah I thought at times that the romance was quite quick and so we didn't get much of an opportunity to see that relationship develop and yeah I mean it was okay um I first of all gave it a three star rating and then I was looking at some of the other books that I've given three star ratings to and I've I sort of thought, no, nah, it's just not in that sort of vein. So I dropped it down to a 2.75 star. Um, unless you're a really avid Sarah Morgan fan, I probably wouldn't recommend reading it just because, I don't know, just this, there was nothing groundbreaking in it. And yeah, it was okay. Next up is another book that I gave the same rating to of 2.75 stars, and that is Chasing Perfect. Yeah, Chasing Perfect by Susan Mallory. This is the first book in the Fool's Gold series. Uh, this is a series that Sarah from Steeped in Books talks about on her channel quite a lot, so I thought I would give it a go. And this particular book follows Josh and Charity. Charity has just moved to the town of Fool's Gold and they're in a bit of a unique situation at the moment. She's kind of working for the city council, as it were. Um, in that they don't have an awful lot of men who live in the area um, and this eventually is really going to affect the area um, maybe so much so that it just becomes a bit of a no man's land sort of thing so they're doing all they can in in the sort of cap on the council to kind of make sure that they can attract more men into the town um, so charity has just accepted this job um, and um, Josh is your sort of local famous person as it were he is a famous cyclist he's competed in the tour de france and lots of other uh, very prestigious cycling competitions and he's back home and has been back home for a while um taking a break from cycling and it's about the relationship between charity and josh um i thought the storyline of this one was quite good um, I quite like the fact that you got to see what was happening in the, on the council and all of the decisions that were being made and things like that. Um, it was interesting reading about Josh and um, his cycling career and why he was taking a break from cycling and that sort of idea. Um, the relationship between Charity and Josh happened quite quickly. Um, or should I say the sex happened quite quickly um yeah that it fell into a couple of traps for me which i didn't really like um so i'm not going to mention what the traps are here just because it will be a massive spoiler for the story and i don't want to do that um but there are a couple of things that i didn't really like about about the storyline and again i didn't particularly um get on that well with the writing style I've never read anything else by Susan Mallory and this is another one that was written a while ago now, I want to say like early 2000s, let me just have a little look and see, um, oh no it wasn't, 2010, okay so not that long ago, um, yeah and I just I've kind of felt like it, romance writing has come an awful long way since then and yeah I just didn't really like the style of it that much so um I got that one from my library and I can't get the rest of the series so I'm sort of seeing at the moment what I'm going to do about the series um where how I can catch up with it I don't know whether I'm that invested in continuing on um but yeah like I said I gave that one 2.75 stars the sixth book that I read in March was Single Father, Wife Needed by Sarah Morgan. This is the second book in the Glenmore Island Doctor series, uh, the first book I mentioned earlier on in this video. Uh, this particular book follows Logan, who is Kyla's older brother, older brother, or brother in, in that, and so he's the other doctor on the island, and then it also fo fo focuses around Ivana he's the other practice nurse on the island so you've got two doctors two nurses um, and Logan's wife died in childbirth 
the year before kind of we're reading this and he's bringing up his daughter Kirsty, I think her name is um and him and Ivana have been best friends for as long as they can remember or really good friends anyway she's helping him out with looking after his daughter uh, while he's kind of try trying to juggle that and you know going to work and things like that um and Ivana has been in love with Logan for as long as she can remember but he doesn't really notice her in that kind of way um, and basically the book focuses around their romance um like the first one in the series the writing was just wasn't up to par for me and um yeah I just her her writing has come an awful long way since she wrote these books and you know I enjoyed it for what it were what it was but it wasn't anything spectacular and again I gave that one 2.75 stars and the last book that I read in March is another Sarah Morgan month is Suddenly Last Summer by Sarah Morgan. This is the second book in the Snow Crystal trilogy um, and I bought books two and three a few months ago and just hadn't got around to reading them. So I decided I need something something light again. I had a month of doing that I think. Um, so I decided to pick up this and this tells the story of um, Sean and Elise. Sean is one of the O'Neill brothers who own the Snow Crystal Ski Resort and Elise is the chef that works in their restaurant and at the beginning of the book they are opening up this new cafe called The Boathouse and their grandfather has a heart attack and he's been completing the deck um, and so Sean comes home from see, is it Boston? I want to say it's Boston. He doesn't live with the, the family. He's a, um, a surgeon in Boston and um, he comes home um, because obviously his grandfather has had a heart attack um, and then Elise needs somebody to help her finish the boathouse and so he volunteers to help her. Um, last summer they had a bit of a, not a fling, but they had basically a one night stand um, and they're both not after relationships at all uh, but of course he comes back and helps her out with the deck and it's about their romance um these were written a lot later than the ones that i already described in this video so this one was written in or published in 2014 and you can definitely tell the difference i just enjoy her later writing so much more than her earlier writing and it's it's just feel like it's got so much more depth that her characters feel a lot more realistic, that her um, style is so much better, uh, that it's so much more believable and and there's just it's just so much so much more fun than yeah it's just fun to read basically. So um really enjoyed this again um, I look forward to reading the third one in the series and I gave this one four stars. So there we go guys, they were all of the books that I read in March, not a bad month at all. Um, we're in April at the moment, the Owls Magical Readathon is going strong, so I will obviously update you at the end of April with everything that I read then. Um, I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below, have you read any of these books, what did you think of them, and um, what sort of things were you reading in March? Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video, bye.